Hello, everyone. Welcome to another workshop by Tayos. Today we have with us Dr. Vikranti Sailor. Hello, Vikranti. Hi. Hi, Zara. Hello. Are How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Welcome to our workshop. Thank you. So, uh, Vikranti is a doctor by profession and uh, she loves gardening. So today she'll share with us how her passion for cacti started and she'll take us into the world of cacti and tell us more about this beautiful species of plants. You can connect with her on Instagram. Uh, her Instagram handle is the plant underscore doc where she shares all her uh, beautiful cacti collections and uh, today she's going to tell us a little about them. So over to you Vikranti. Let's get started. Yeah. Thank you, Zara. So I'm Dr. Vikranti Saylor and I am MD medicine by profession. I have been practicing medicine in Baroda and uh, my passion for gardening started since the very beginning, since I have seen my parents doing it. And uh, from that time, I had the inspiration, but after my finishing my studies and my graduation, I got a little bit of time and initially I got a uh, few of the cacti, don't even know their names, uh, but since then it started and uh, from that very time, uh, step by step we have been gathering knowledge, me and my siblings and uh, from that very time, uh, as soon as we have uh, uh, tried getting more and more of the knowledge regarding the particular species of the cactus, their care and everything. Uh, now it has become more of an addiction. So the journey started that way. Amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Amazing. So, so uh, tell us a little about, you know, how these cactuses are. So as we all know, the cactus are the desert species. Uh, they are categorized, now they are categorized differently from succulents, but initially the cacti, uh, all cacti comes under the group of succulents, that is, we can say that the cacti or cacti are succulents, but all succulents are not cacti. So the specific characteristics of cacti are, they are the modified ones according to the dry uh, weather, and uh, the stems are modified to store water and uh, the leaves are modified to uh, uh, into thorns or the spines and uh, the, the stem carry out the process of photosynthesis in uh, in cacti and since they are desert plants they are very hard to pollinate them they are very hard to like uh, reproduce them so uh, they produce very, very beautiful, attractive flowers. It is said that all cacti are flowering plants. And uh, so, uh, as soon as they flower, they have a very able, attractive flowers. They, they have very good aroma. And uh, when the flower uh, when the flower blooms, they are, they are pollinated. And uh, pollinated by bees or anything, or even bats. And when they are pollinated, they can be grown uh, or reproduced are propagated from them so that is how they propagate in the desert uh, region in their natural climate uh, but uh, not all cacti are from the desert region some of them are from the tropical region so those cacti they don't tend to like the very uh, dry and hot atmosphere so they have to look after uh, very uh, very keenly thank you Zara okay uh, so you were telling us little that about uh, the cactus is different from succulents yeah so can you elaborate a little bit on that so uh, as i said so if we look at this uh, look at a cacti the main important thing that a cacti has is an areole if a plant or a cacti has an areole it is a it is a cactus the areole is the place from where the spines come out so there are uh, certain other uh, succulents. This is a succulent urea. So it does have some certain spines, but since it does not have an areole, uh, 
it's though it is a fleshy stem it stores water and everything it thrives in dry humid or uh, dry climate but uh, since it does not have an aerial it is a, it is categorized under succulents and the one having the aerial if you can see the small thing over here this is okay. the aerial and uh -huh. uh, since because of this characteristics it is characterized into cactus okay so this is the main important difference between them otherwise oh. the cactus can have leaves both of them can have flowers and uh, both of them can have spines okay what is the only one little difference that uh, uh, differentiates succulents from cacti yeah so uh, now i would like to show you some of my collection of different cacti and succulents i'll be starting with the cactuses that i have and i'll be uh, talking about the uh, some important specific features that a particular cactus has so to be starting with this beautiful cactus if everybody can see this is yes. a uh, laminaria species and this is a fish hook, fish hook cactus if you look at the spines of this cactus they are in the shape of a fish hook they are bent oh okay so this is a fish hook cactus and if you can see here this is a seed pod and not a flower this is a seed pod from here the seeds come out and uh, they get further uh, germinated okay so here is the another cactus this is a golden barrel cactus and uh, this cactus can live up to 30 years it grows very bigger and only after growing up to 30 years it flowers so oh, wow these are very hard to find and uh, very hard to care also oh okay this other is gymno calisium horsti so it has a very beautiful flower coming in uh, the spring season and they'll have uh, everything from the aerial aerial is the particular space from uh, where the spines the flower buds the seeds the roots everything comes out from the aerial so that is the most important thing about a cactus this one is a boxing glove chola and it grows very uh, commonly in india and uh, it grows very easy very easy to get cactus this other is an apuntia species and uh, this is a johnson's hybrid they are also commonly known as a prickly pear cactus this again is a prickly pear cactus so this here is a apuntia tuna monstera and this again can be propagated from the small buds that is growing this two looks a bit similar but uh, this is the other species and uh, this is sub sub lettuce minima this is a copper king because of the uh, copper spines that is producing this is mammillaria elongata this one is a golden lace lady finger cactus because of the golden lace that it is producing the spines are in the form of golden lace this one uh, looks more of a lemony and that is why it is named as lemon ball cactus So here is a very beautiful one. Uh, look at the spines. It looks as if uh, it looks as the hair of some old man. That is why it is named as an old man cactus. Zara, can you see? Uh, yes, but it's not very clear on the camera. Can you now see it? Yes, yes, lovely. So here is this cactus. It is in the shape of a rabbit ear. That is why it is named as a bunny ear cactus. Okay. Hmm? 
so here this is trichocerus grandiflora look at the pups they are growing and some of the pups they have even started rooting while still being on the oh uh, wow while being attached to the mother plant so this is a uh, Euphorbia leucodendron. This is not a cactus. This is a succulent. Since uh, other variety of euphorbia is that important thing is that when you pluck it, you get a milky sap-like thing coming out of it. So that is why it is known as euphorbia, and that is a common feature in every euphorbia plant that you can see. Oh, okay. And it's growing in a very small pot. It's grown very tall yeah. and long in that little pot itself. So the important thing about cactus is you have to always choose the right uh, shape of the pot or the size of the pot is very important. If the plant is small, you definitely have to uh, choose a right size of the pot. So if okay. you can see this, this is a common Indian ficus or Indian fig plant, uh, okay. also known as a prickly pear. So this flowers in. Uh, flowers very easily and after the flowers have been pollinated they give a very prickly pear fruits that you see so here is everybody's favorite moon cactus that is on the root stalk this is a dragon fruit and this here is a uh, species from uh, uh, gymnocalycium variety so they since this plant does not have a chlorophyll it always have to be grafted on the root stalk otherwise it cannot survive on its own oh okay and it looks like a small flower over it it that uh, that is just the uh, other puff coming out of the mother uh, plant oh wow and it's got a different color yeah this is a red one So the pups have a different color than the mother plant. Yeah, that happens sometimes. So here, if you can see, uh, though this is, uh, they both are from the same mother plant. They have been grafted, uh -huh. but uh, some have little variegation. This this one has turned pink, and this one is more red. Yes. So this may can happen in uh, uh, certain species sometimes. Oh, okay, interesting. So now we'll be starting with uh, this uh, succulents uh, and some of the cactus. So this here is a peanut cactus, if everybody can see. The small yes. peanuts that we can see, this is a hanging cacti and okay. it can be used in hanging pots. Oh, wow. Like our money plants. Yeah. So this one is a fish bone cactus if you can see wow it's very beautiful the bone uh, the shape uh, of the stem is modified in the shape of a fish bone yes so, even this can be used as a hanging uh, planter and uh, they flower very easy uh, in spring months they flower very profusely okay so to be starting with uh, this uh, succulents this is a gasteria variety and uh, this also can be grown from the nearby pups that is that it grows near the mother plant and uh, this is also known as ox tongue. So here this is a string of bananas and this one is a, a Havartia species, Havartia cybicornis. So this entirely the shape of the uh, this shape looks like banana. That is why it is known as string of banana. This is known as malifora, and uh, this is uh, started flowering, and it flowers after 12 to 1 p.m. here over in India, and uh, different different colors of flowers can be found whenever they bloom. 
so here this is a very commonly found pencil cactus it is in the shape of a, a small small pencil they can be just plucked uh, one and uh, can be propagated from single single stems they have a very little flowers that are uh, little little leaves that can be seen on the top and okay. uh, after they have fully attained their maturity even sometimes the flower white flowers can be seen so this is a snake plant and uh, this again uh, comes under the category of succulents and this one is a variety of a uh, uh, moonshine variety and this i have propagated from a leaf cutting okay this so is this the is the, plant. the this common is, uh, snake plant that we have as indoor plants yes yes they can be kept as indoor plants their light requirements are very minimal even the water requirements are less so they can be kept indoors okay that is why they are categorized into succulents yeah though they okay. are succulents but uh, their requirements are slightly different uh, not all succulents and cacti they come from the arid desert regions some of them are tropical so okay. that is why some have adapted themselves to the other climatic requirements of their own okay but the snake plant does not have spikes so how do we know that it's a no, succulent not all succulents will have like this okay. uh, the succulents are the one that uh, that have fleshy leaves and fleshy stems okay so okay. in that very uh, stems in the fleshy leaves in the stems they store water yes got it so that uh, uh, feature is present with snake plants snake plants okay Amazing. So here we are looking after this Kalanpoi humilis. Look at the tiger stripes that is have, and it is in the flowering stage. If you can see. Yes, very pretty. Now with his, here it is Havarti species. The clear part that is uh, that it has on the top, that is little bit clear, more transparent than the. Uh, part which is at the bottom and that okay. is uh, from this part that uh, this particular plant carries out its photosynthesis okay so this is a chain plant it grows in chain so that is why it is named as chain uh, chain plant you can just pluck it from the node and just tuck it in the soil and they'll grow again from that it's got a very beautiful shape. It's really interesting. Yeah. It will grow one by one from one chain to other, one to other, one to other. Oh, wow. So this is a Havart here. This again is in the uh, blooming stage. Uh, this way, a long stem will be coming up and there will be flowering on the top. So this will go, go a little bit taller and then it will flat from from the very center okay lovely and i really like the way you have planted them in some beautiful mugs and pots they're very pretty to look at yeah, do they come really like this in the market or do you plant them no it has taken me so long to collect all the planters and then it, it is just a vicious circle like uh, I'll be getting more of the planters and then comes the uh, thing that you no know, now I have to get the plants. So okay. then the plants would be in excess to the planters or the planters would be in excess to the plants. So that is a vicious circle that I always run in. Oh, lovely. So this again is a jade plant. This again is a succulent. And uh -huh. uh, this is the bonsai that we have done from the jade plant. Very beautiful. Really love the shape that has come up. Yeah. Very that, pretty. Uh, they have to use the specific wires to get the specific bend. And then uh -huh. they have to continue it from there. So how long, uh, how old is this plant? This one is around three years old. Oh, wow. You have to continuously. And it's still and, uh, under training. The shape B1. Yeah. Yes. And the pot is also very beautiful. Thank you. So this is a, a, a gravy plant. 
and uh, this is very commonly found in deserts and the mm-hmm. people living around deserts they don't usually have uh, something to eat or it is very difficult for them to like get food in their desert area that is no common green vegetations can be grown so uh, from the roots of that agave plant uh, they grow very bigger and from that uh, the roots are edible the roots of the agave plant are edible so here if you look at it this is a silver dollar plant if you look at the leaves they look like a silver dollar and here are the aerial roots coming out of it yes so this is a baby sun rose plant and uh, it is uh, very beautifully beautifully flowering um, these are the flower buds that can be seen and it will flower in a day or a two but uh, okay. they require full sun to flower and uh, very nice tiny beautiful colorful flowers will be coming okay so this is a uh, palankoi plant miloti palankoi miloti and it has a very waxy and velvety leaves and even they flower sometimes mine has not flowered yet okay so this is a, a snowflake aloe vera the aloe that we, aloes that we talk about even they comes under the category of succulent and this is some uh, other variety of aloe and it has a very beautiful tiny tiny white uh, flakes over it so that is why it is named as snowflake oh okay so this is a euphorbia variety the one that i talked about it is a variegated one it has leaves uh, uh, the leaves are shed this particular thing that entirely was leafy but uh, okay. because of the winter dormancy the shed all its leaves and now uh, with the commencement of spring uh, the new leaves are started up and uh, they have the variegated color okay so that this is a sedum growing over here it is also a succulent and this here is a pregnant onion succulent uh if you look at the bulb of the pregnant onion when it matures or grows a little bit bigger baby onions uh, the baby plants will be growing from it this okay one, it looks like an onion so that is why it is named as pregnant onion oh interesting <laughs> you have a wide now, range of uh, cactus how do you remember so many names and uh, so many species and different uh, <coughs> i'm sure they would be different uh, you know reacting differently to different uh, temperatures yeah i mean it has become a habit that whenever we get a plant we immediately like now we have the speeches like google lens and everything so okay. we immediately google the uh, Uh, plant and its characteristics and its care and the propagation and everything and okay. uh, then uh, immediately we will uh, take care of the plant accordingly the plant okay. part of the nurseries the kind of soil that they provide uh, sometimes is not accurate for uh, a particular cactus or a succulent so uh, we would just google out and gather all the information that we can and then uh, we would take uh, care of that particular plant accordingly so that is how we always get learn to okay that okay that's interesting to know look well, can you uh, like approximately how many species uh, do you have <laughs> i haven't counted but yeah around 200 species of cactus i and succulents both mixed and some i mean uh, if we would be having having dragon plants or the dragon fruit plants uh, we have grown it from uh, the seeds they have grown very very tall uh, they have uh, attained their uh, mature adult height so then we have propagated it so much that uh, there are around uh, 30 to 40 uh, dragon fruit plants and uh, others i mean 
they have adapted to the environment our environment very nicely so they keep on getting divided on its own now okay wow beautiful so this is a dragon fruit plant it uh, has been grown from the seeds all all this uh, uh, dragon fruit plants have been grown from the seeds uh, the seed uh, the fruit that we get in the market the black seeds that uh, sesame it looks like sesame seeds and okay. uh, they can be propagated very easily and uh, from that we have grown all these dragon fruits so okay, it was just wow. an experiment in the beginning that got turned into an addiction now oh lovely so have you got any fruit till now no not yet okay not yet. Uh, it is yet uh, to be flowering uh, it has not yet flowered in, in, it will get a very big uh, bloom and uh, that has to the uh, particular feature about a cactus uh, flowers is that it is uh, it is uh, bisexual in its own that is the male and the female reproductive uh, organs are uh, both present in one particular flower only they okay. don't need to be they can be cross pollinated but uh, uh, if they are pollinated uh, on their own uh, very particular one particular flower then a fruit can be bloomed from that to that also. Okay, amazing. So now uh, I would like to talk about uh, the soil composition that we use uh, for our cactus plants. So uh, there are many schools of uh, thought they, that uh, uh, that talk about the soil requirement of the uh, cactus <coughs> but everything the soil watering and everything depends upon the temperature in which you live so if you are living in a dry a very dry uh, climate your requirement the particular plant will be different uh, if you live in a very tropical climate the requirement of the plant will be different and that everything you learn from trial and error nothing <coughs> specific I'll say and if you do the same the results can be different so uh, if I talk about Absolutely. the soil composition that we use over here uh, that is 40% uh, we use sand 40% we use uh, co uh, cocoa peat and 20% uh, is compost uh, we also sometimes add uh, perlite uh, according to the availability and uh, neem kali neem kali is the antifungal agent and also it acts as uh, insecticide so uh, that two particular things that we add that uh, adds to the uh, adds well to the soil and it has to be very uh, good drainage capacity that is uh, the, it should not retain much of the moisture so that the root rot can happen. Again, the uh, water requirement of the cactus depends upon the season and uh, it also depends upon the area in which you are living. Um, so if it's winter, then we usually try to water it once a week. Uh, during summers, uh, every two days or three days, and that also depends upon the place where it is kept. Like if it is kept completely outdoors, then it might need uh, more uh, water than the plants that are kept more in the shade. So that will depend and vary. You have to like uh, continuously scrutinize your plants and then you'll get to know as to how much water requirement a plant particularly needs. And uh, okay. the light requirement, if we talk about, then for cactus, uh, it is no thumb rule or the rule that, uh, that it is a myth that uh, they should be kept in complete full sunlight. Because uh, the places, the, even the desert places from where the cacti belong, uh, they have been staying under the rocks or they have been growing under the rocks or uh, the, uh, on the, in the sky. The clouds are in such a way that uh, <clears throat> they, they do not get the full uh, harsh sunlight. Other uh, other thing is uh, the spines, they are modified.
classified in a way that they scatter the sunlight. So uh, this is a myth that a cacti should uh, be getting uh, most of the part of full sunlight. Uh, some of the desert cacti, they can do well with that, but other tropical ones, they have to be kept in a bright filtered sunlight and should be away from the other uh, uh, harsh sunlight. So are they, are the, can these plants be kept indoors? Are there any species? Are there any species of cacti that can be kept indoors? That gives fruits. No, no. Can we keep it indoors? Can we keep it as indoor plants? Indoors. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the thing is, uh, there are many species that can be kept indoors. Uh, no such rules but it should get a particular sunlight i mean if it is getting uh, sunlight lesser than its requirement then uh, it won't grow much it will it can stay that uh, in that particular stagnant dormant state that uh, it has been uh, or it will grow very slimmer and uh, thinner on the top uh, uh, sometimes uh, they can get leggy even the cacti can get leggy so uh, the uh, they can uh, it is not a thumb rule that they can't be keep kept indoors but then you won't see the maximum growth that they can attain like okay. for this gymnocalisium that I, I was talking about the initial one was very green this one has received full sunlight and uh, now it has turned all red it is maybe it will die in some days but this can happen the sunlight requirement has to be monitored So compare both, if you compare both, this has received a proper amount of sunlight. This was in the harsh sunlight. So this one is all turned uh, red and this one is all green. Beautiful green. So Zara, can we continue with the propagation of cacti? Sarah, can okay. you hear me? Yes, yes. Please continue. Yeah. <clears throat> so if we talk about the cactus, uh, the propagation, they can be propagated from this offshoots that grow alongside uh, this uh, main mother plant. They can okay. be just plugged. And after they are plugged, you don't have to immediately uh, <clears throat> tuck it in the soil. You can wait for two to three days. The part from where you have uh, offshoots have been taken, let it callous over for two to three days. And then you can, uh, the soil composition that have been mentioned earlier, you can use that and uh, uh, you can keep that in the <coughs> planter. So you can take the planter. You have to like, uh, it should, this is the compulsory rule to have a good, uh, <clears throat> drainage hole and after okay. that you have to like fill up the planter and uh, choose the planter wisely for a cacti I mean if it is such a small cactus you can't choose a very big planter the ratio is 20% bigger than this uh, will do so very small planter you have to choose initially and as soon as the cactus grows uh, because the uh, bigger the planter you choose, the more you tend to water. You always tend to water a plant according to the planter and not according to the size of the plant. So, uh, if the planter is small, you'll tend to water, uh, <coughs> water less and the soil will get, get dry and after only after the top inch of the soil is dry, you have to water it again. Okay, yeah, that's a good point because uh, these plants don't need a lot of water. So this we have propagated uh, from the mother plant and uh, this are still growing and this one has attained, uh, this has grown uh, much bigger after a few months. And this one has attained the maturity and after it has reached a particular size, it will release more offshoots. So this again oh. can be propagated. Oh wow, very pretty. Small, small basket. 
So this is the same uh, species of the plant that is a lemon ball uh, cactus. But uh, if you compare it with the pri uh, prior one, this one has been grafted. <coughs> so if you graft it, the growth will be much more and the pups will be much more than the ones which is not grafted. So this is another reason that uh, we graft our plants. Oh, okay. So other is, uh, they can be grown from the cuttings. So this is a cutting of a fairy castle uh, cactus. It was very big, but then it had a fungal infection or a fungal rot. And we had to cut it. Uh, and after cutting, we had to, we have to let it callus over. We have to let the lower part dry off. And then we have to plant it. And uh, okay. even during that stage, it has like, uh, grown another bud out of it. Yeah, very nice. So this are the pads or the apuntia plant. These are the prickly pears. And some of the species of the cacti can grow their thorns up to 15 centimeters. That is just a defensive mechanism to be get it, uh, get, uh, protected against the predators uh, in the desert. So these are the pads. They can be either cut or they can be removed from the mother plant and then they can be planted after they have callus over properly. <coughs> Other thing we have already seen that uh, this is a grafting. Another method of propagating a cactus is a grafting. So this is a very specific thing that we have grafted two cactus over here. But uh, now the rootstock is not providing enough nutrition to the plant or the scion, the one uh, that is to be grafted is known as scion. And uh, this one is a peanut cactus. And this here is a fairy castle. So they both were gra grafted initially, they were doing good. But later on, the root stock has now stopped providing nutrition to the uh, thing that has been grafted. So this can happen to any plant. Okay. So look at this again. The grafting has been done initially. Uh, it was done successfully, but then the root stock has stopped providing nutrition to the scion. Okay. The other method of propagation is uh, via the seeds. So this are the seed pods of a cacti, and uh, you can just open it. There are tiny black seed coming out of it, if you can see. Yes. So this can be either kept in a moist cocoa peat uh, for some days. You have to just sprinkle the water over it and uh, they will uh, sprout in few days, three to four days. And you have to provide a very Right filter light during that time and no harsh sunlight has to be given. The other thing about uh, cacti propagation is uh, through the... That is a very harsh and cruel method. Uh, the apical part of the cacti. Uh, some cultivators, they hot nail it. The nail is uh, heated and the apical part has been damaged and because of that the side uh, areas they are stimulated to grow more pups so for the cactus not uh, growing very well or uh, the ones to those who want the uh, more buds to come out they will hot nail it or even they bisect the uh, both side of the cacti and then they will let the both side grow uh, individually And if we uh, talk about the propagation of succulents, then uh, like if we talk about this one, we just have to pluck this part. Again, this has to callus over. And after two to three days, you just have to keep it under the soil. Uh, you can uh, keep it with the mother plant or you can use other uh, smaller pots to repot the baby succulents. And uh, 
if we talk about this special cactus, we have uh, tried growing it uh, in water. Uh, and this has grown very beautiful roots. Yes, lovely. So after the roots have grown a little bit longer, we'll transplant it further. Okay. So you propagate it in water and then transfer it to the soil. Yeah. Then we have to again give time uh, to every plant while transplanting from water to soil to adapt to the new environment. And uh, in those initial two to three days, you have to water it according, uh, water it the way they have been living in their, uh, while they were in the water. So you have to water more. But later on, uh, while uh, they have attained their roots in water, they have, the roots are properly adapted to the soil, uh, they can be then, the watering can be decreased. Okay. So, now if we talk about the fertilization, uh, there are like, you can fertilize it uh, either with the organic one, or the inorganic one and the organic fertilizers uh, that are available they are even the pre-mixed solutions are available and uh, other is uh, bone meal can be used or neem khali can be used bone meal has a higher concentration of phosphorus so that is uh, good for the cacti plant and uh, okay. once a month <coughs> only during the uh, winter dormancy is over during that time, you have to fertilize your cactus. So, winter dormancy is something when the temperature drops below 20 degrees centigrade. So, during that particular time, the cactus needs complete rest. You don't have to disturb them. They have to provide. They have to be provided a uh, filtered sunlight. Uh, you have to water very less. They have. You do not have to fertilize them. <coughs> they have to be given complete rest. So as soon as the spring arrives, they can be uh, flowering. They uh, they can flower easily. They are ready to flower. So this was in the dormant phase. So okay. let's see how it comes out in spring now. This is a fairy castle cactus. It is yet to become out of a winter dormancy. Okay. So, if we talk about the problems associated with the cactuses, first of all, you have to select the uh, drainage pot with, uh, which has a hole uh, in it. Other is choosing the right size of the pot. If, if your plant or the cactus is small, the, the container or the planter that you are choosing has to be smaller. Uh, as soon as it grows, you can shift it to the bigger pot. Okay. Then the other is, they can have certain pest attacks like scales and everything, and they can be cleared off with, uh, uh, by brushing or rubbing it with 70% uh, alcohol. Sometimes they can even have mealy bug, and then that can be cleared off with soap water and neem uh, oil. And uh, yeah, sometimes if, if uh, the, uh, there is a problem with overwatering, then they can have a fungal infection. And uh, once they get this fungal infection, it is very hard to treat. And uh, at that time, it becomes very difficult to salvage the cactus. OK. So now I'll be uh, demonstrating uh, grafting of a cactus. OK. So, if you can see, this is the root stock or the uh, lower stock over which you can grab. This, uh, uh, while choosing a root stock, it has to be in the growing stage. It should be plumped. It should be watered uh, prior 24 hours prior to the grafting. It has to be watered properly. And uh, since it is growing this new shoot, it shows that it is in the growing stage. Uh, while grafting, we have to remove this shoot, otherwise uh, the nutrition will be provided to this uh, very shoot. Okay. And uh, the one to be grafted is known as scion. 
and uh, they are usually grafted if you talk about moon cactus they are grafted because they do not produce they are colorful and they do not produce chlorophyll so for that thing we have to graft them certain cactus they are very slow growing so to enhance their growth we have to graft them and uh, other thing is just for this aesthetic purposes people uh, graft them so yeah so while grafting you have to keep everything like ready uh, you can either use uh, a sterile blades or knife to uh, graft and uh, keep uh, tissue papers and everything handy um, you have to first of all sterilize the blade Can we use scissors for this, or is it difficult to use a scissor? No, scissors can't be used because uh, uh, it would be very difficult to cut a cactus, and uh, there has to be very minimum cellular damage to the uh, cacti that we are cutting. Okay. Grafting. So okay. you scissors can't be used for this purpose. All right. And other. So this is a scion. It has already started to root on its own. Yes. Okay. Yes. Tiny roots coming out. Yeah. But we have to remove that. Uh, we have to remove this one. Also. Because we don't want this growth to spur. Okay. So this can be also be uh, propagated and grown into a new plant the shoot that you have just cut out sorry uh, yeah yeah that can be propagated again okay you have to let it callous over and okay. then it can be planted again okay so you have to initially tie the thread over the cactus so that uh, it is very easy to uh, manipulate later on So this is just any normal thread or uh, the thread which has uh, a bit of stretching capacity I normally we use uh, woolen threads because okay. they are stretchable the other okay. threads uh, which are very uh, sharp and that can uh, damage your root stock they okay. should be avoided all right other is you can uh, also use uh, cello tape the tapes they can be used to fix this or you can also use rubber bands okay but since this pot is larger uh, it will be convenient for us to use a thread so you have to cut you know one straight cut you have to cut this uh, part of the dragon fruit or the root stock uh, well minimally in a very straight line Okay. And then you have to cut the edges. You don't need the cactus to be growing from this part. So this All has right. to be cut. This is known as chamfering. So can you see a ring in the center? Yes. This is a vascular ring cambium. The similar thing can be seen on the scion. So that too has to match. Oh, Even okay. This has to be straight now. You have to cut very minimally uh, down the line. Are you cutting beside the roots or are you cutting the roots as well? I've cut the roots also because then okay. it will grow from there. Okay, okay. There is a very small circular ring seen in the center of the sign also. So you have to match both of them. Yes.
So you just placed it on top of it. Contact. It has to be in a tight contact. Both of okay. them. You can uh, even use extra threads to tie this uh, with the things. And uh, then uh, later on, you have to cover it with a polythene bag or something. And uh, let it stay in a uh, very shady place for some days, for like uh, 7 to 10 days. And uh, after 10 days, you can remove the thread and uh, look for the uh, successful grafting if it has taken over or not. And uh, similarly, you can uh, do that with the uh, moon cactus or uh, you can graft this apunchia. Uh, either you can use it at, as a rootstock or you can uh, use a scion. If, uh, if you're... Uh, Using it as a scion, then there is a uh, vascular ring that can be seen is in the form of a straight line. So you have to match the straight line of uh, this part with the root stalk. Okay. And then you have to uh, like uh, graft the, both the In a similar way, you have to tie them up together? Yeah. So you can just, uh, again this has grown from here, you have to remove the lower part. And yeah, don't forget to wear your gloves because uh, sometimes they are very hard to handle. Okay. So yeah, you just have to keep this part over here and you have to tie this. Since this is very, uh, you know, flat, how can you tie it? This one? Yeah. Isn't it difficult to tie? Uh, you can use more threads over, uh, if you want. And uh, okay. sometimes it can uh, just stay in place. <clears throat> Yeah, you need, we'll need some extra hands and extra help to do it. So sometimes we can do that. Can't we just uh, wrap a tape around, you, you yeah, know, the we can point? Do that. We can do that. But okay. uh, uh, we have seen more success with uh, this one. I mean, it stays in place for a very good time. And okay. uh, since uh, this Apontia has uh, very big spines, so it is very hard to wrap a tape over it. So that is why it is better if we use uh, the woolen threads. Threads, okay. It looks very interesting to see a plant tied like that. So if you see this, this is a very good rootstock. And uh, this was initially a very small shine to start with. And then it has like all taken over. And the other pups growing out of it, they have grown very bigger. Okay. So here if we see, uh, there can be sometimes a mismatch between the scion and the root stock. And uh, because of that, uh, sometimes the scion does not uh, get well with the root stock. And uh, the root stock will not provide enough energy uh, to the scion. And uh, that is why they may remain small. This one is growing again. It has started oh, okay. growing. So this again is a fairy castle grafted over a uh, this dragon fruit. And this is grown in a very weird manner. <laughs> and this again is uh, a dragon fruit that has been grafted with fairy castle. 
there is a fungal infection over here but the yeah. cambium has matched so properly that it has formed a, a thick and stem like thing so that is why it has it is getting nutrition and still it is growing uh, okay. we thought it will die in a few days but still it has been growing many uh, babies from here okay lovely So this one is again the red gymnokinesium grafted over a uh, dragon fruit. This one has again started uh, growing uh, its own baby and now we have to cut this one so that this uh, gymnokinesium can get all the uh, nutrition that has been provided uh, that is intended to be provided by the rootstock. Okay. Uh, we just have five more minutes left, Vikranti. So if there's anything more that you wanted to share. So yeah, uh, if we want to uh, talk about uh, the propagation of some very uh, beautiful, important plants, then I would be stretching upon, is this a very beautiful umbrella palm? This uh, uh, usually grows like this. Uh, and... Uh, while you want to propagate it, you have to cut its stem and okay. you have to dip, in, dip it inside the water this way. In an Upside down. Fresh. Yeah. Okay. So I have done the propagation and you can see the roots in the new shoots coming out of it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And again, the requir water requirement of this plant is very more, very much. So you have to water it very frequently. You can even uh, keep it over the places. Uh, it usually grows over the places like uh, the lakeside or everything where the uh, water keeps on touching them. Okay. So that is how uh, this very plant grows. It comes under the category of uh, uh, palm variety. It is a umbrella palm. Okay. Can you uh, tell us a little about the uh, medicinal importance of cactus? So yeah, uh, according to Ayurveda, some of uh, this uh, uh, cacti plant, they are, uh, uh, I mean, they have, uh, Ayurveda uh, advised to uh, take cactus juice, even they are available uh, for uh, health benefits. And okay. uh, even they say that the uh, fruits that are coming out of cactus, that is dragon fruit, that has got uh, very important medicinal uh, benefits. And uh, even some of the cacti, they are used for uh, growing this, uh, uh, making this uh, uh, anti-cancer agents. So yeah, okay. uh, that is to some of the medical importance of uh, cacti. And even if you talk about the succulents, then uh, aloe vera. Aloe vera has a very good uh, uh, dermatological properties. And uh, yes. that is very good for skin and hairs. And even the consumption of the juice of aloe vera is good for digestion and all. So, yeah. Amazing. That was a wonderful session, Vikranti. Thank you so much for, uh, you know, taking us into a different world of uh, plants. It was uh, so nice to see all the different species that you have and your passion for these cactus. Thank you. Thank you, Zara. And uh, thank you, Affordable Organic Store, for providing me the opportunity. And uh, I would even like to th thank my brother and my husband and my sisters and my cousins who would have always been so supported, supportive and uh, encouraging. Uh, and uh, thank you for providing the platform to uh, represent us. And uh, thank you so much. Our pleasure, Vikranti. It was very nice having you today with us. Thank and uh, we like to thank all the audience who have joined us today. And hope you've enjoyed the session as much as I did. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. So on this note, we'll say goodbye to our audience and stay tuned for another wonderful workshop next week. Thank you, Vikranti. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.